Hello fellow calculus students, my name is Lucas Hicks and I'm going to be doing objective 87, problem number 8. The objective is, well we get a little cue here, it says a ball is thrown upward from a height of 112 feet above the ground with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second. From physics it is known that the velocity at time t is v of t equals 96 minus 32t feet per second. So the first thing we need to do is find s of t, the function given the height of the ball at time t. Now this is a problem we've done before. The only difference is we kind of have to go backwards a step and then go forwards a step. Originally, or, or usually we're given that um, function of s of t, and then we have to find v of t by taking the derivative, and then we set that equal to zero and all that fun stuff. Well, here we're given v of t, and we have to go backwards. So we go ahead and write out what that uh, paragraph is saying. We have a person who is at 112 feet above the ground. He throws a ball, goes up, yay, and then it comes back down. So, and I went ahead and wrote out the second question is really whenever that equals zero, when s of t, the, the y value equals zero, what is the value for t? So let's find the first thing, uh, which is the equation. So all we need to do is find the antiderivative, so I have that over here. S of t equals the antiderivative of 96 minus 32t d of t because it's you're taking a derivative of, with respect to t. So I went ahead and solved that all out. We just have to divide by 2 by the, you know, raised to the power divided by 2. Then we end up with s of t equals negative 16t squared plus 96t plus c. Now that's a problem because we have two variables. We have a t and we have a c. So what we need to do is solve for that c. And we can do that because we have that information. When t is 0, we know when the, the time, no time has passed, we know where the ball is. It's already 112 feet because that's where the little person is. You know, they're, they're standing up there. So we already know that. So we can set that, enter in those values, 112 equals negative 16. Uh, let me move this over so you can not have a glare on it. Um, negative 16t, set all that to zero, you know, put add zero in it where the t is, and then solve for c. And that's going to be 0, 0, c equals 112. So now we have that. We can plug that back into the full function to get negative 16t squared plus 96t plus 112. If you were to graph that, it should look something along the lines of this, except it would keep going, but we don't want to look at where t is negative. We just want to look where the time is positive because time can only be positive. So th that's that's going to help us out in the future. Let's just keep that in mind. So we set that equal to zero because we're interested in this value right here. We want to know what t equals whenever this y value is zero. So we set that s of t to zero and we solve for t or we factor for t. And so we're, we're going to end up with, I'm trying to hide all the things I've written, we're going to end up with um, we can pull that negative 16 out and that makes it a little easier to factor and then we're going to have negative 16 t minus 7 t plus 1 those are the only things that work that makes it super easy t equals 7 and t equals negative 1 now t in this case means time and time cannot be negative so it's not negative 1 it can only be 7 good job now we've answered two things up here so far we found the original function, and we know how long it'll take the ball to reach the ground. Seven seconds. Booyah. Now the last one. How high will the ball go? Well, that's that point right there. The ball's got to go up, and then it's going to eventually come back down. Well, there's going to be a state where the ball is neither increasing in velocity or decreasing in velocity. It's just sort of at a standstill. Well, we, we can do that. All we have to do is set that velocity function equal to zero. So we come over here. Set that velocity function equal to zero, and then we factor or, or solve for that t again, and uh, we're going to end up with t equals three, three seconds. So now we know this this point right here is three seconds in. So we could we could draw that three, and then this should be a seven right here. So that's after three seconds. That's it. But that's not what the question is asking us. It's asking us. How high will the ball go? 
how high is that ball after that three second period. All we need to do then is plug that three in to that original um, s of t function. So we do that, s of three, plug it all in. I went ahead and solved it out. It equals 256. So that's this is in feet, so that's going to be 256 feet. Booyah, we've answered all three questions. Super simple. Just remember, it's an antiderivative uh, problem where you have to find originally the original function, and then you do all the things we've, we've been doing. So super simple. Hope you enjoyed it. One of the things that really caught my attention when I started doing this problem is that it's we're talking about time and space. You know, this is this ball is in a specific location in space, and so that that reminded me of of one of my favorite shows of a man who travels through time and space. So I've got a little clip for you. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you some other time.